We need, we need some masala. In the old days, we were using compost toilets, and since people didn't like them that well, and we're trying to make these things marketable to all the people, we invented a solar toilet. I don't know if Kirsten showed you a picture of it last night in the, in the mountains, and we took it to the Himalayas because nothing breaks down there. And what it does is it, it takes human waste and turns it to ash. It fries it like in, a, in an oven to ash. We had it all figured out where it would, uh, we, it, it was it turned out to be less marketable than the compost toilet because uh, we had this thing, this uh, scraper. It was like a, it was like an oven. A solar oven is what it was with a toilet seat on it. I mean, that's really <laughs> all it was. But we had this device in here where it smeared it and made it thin so that the sun would dry it within 40 minutes or something and turn it to ash. And I actually took a mayonnaise jar full of it and, and put water in it and took it to the water testing place and they tested it. It was benign of any bacteria. So I had a mayonnaise jar full of shit dust that I <laughs> took down to the state authorities and dumped it on the guy's desk and then told him what it was and he screamed and jumped up out of his desk. And, uh, but they, I was always re reporting to them what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> And so he said, go ahead, work with it. Somebody's got to do it. Uh, I had a, see, I, I wasn't that stupid. I had established doing all this stuff for 40 years. I, I had established a rapport with all these guys down, these authority guys down at the state level. And the way I, the reason I got into so much trouble was it just, fate would have it that they, they all within a matter of two years retired. One of them retired. There was a bunch of them. One of them retired, one of them had a heart attack and died, one of them had a brain tumor and got cancer and died, and, and they all just faded away, all within two years. And I'm used to going down, down there and dumping shit dust on their desk and not, you know, having them do nothing but scream. Well, I went down there, you know, hadn't been down there for a few months, and they're all gone. And they, I, you know, they said, we hear you're doing this and that up there. I said, yeah, well, Fred Navarro said I could do that. Well, he's dead. He doesn't work here anymore, and you are breaking every rule in the book. And so I got in a lot of trouble through what I call the changing of the guard at the uh, state level, and that was part of what got me into a lot of the trouble I got into. But anyway, we had the solar toilet, it and the compost toilets, and this is an example of how uh, uh, crisis, I guess, and I think this is going to happen with humanity as well, I've been in this situation a lot. Crisis puts you into a different mode of, uh, you know, panic. <laughs> and you, you end up either failing or inventing something. So it was crisis that actually took us to this botanical cell thing, flushing with used water. And the crisis was, I was doing a really custom house. There's a picture of the inside of it over there, that little fireplace thing. It's called the Nautilus. Uh, it's up at the top, two pictures on that p thing, too. The, it doesn't exist anymore. It was engulfed in another whole building. But uh, uh, it was a beautiful house, piece of sculpture, uh, funded by a guy with a suitcase full of cash. I didn't ask any questions. Uh, so, uh, but I wanted it to be a success, and we were getting ready. We had it all designed to put one of these solar toilets in there, and we had been refining them. And that was when we had just built the studios that you're staying in, and they had two solar toilets in them. And it turns out that the solar toilet uh, oven was all made out of metal, and it, it costs like $1,500 to make these things, and, they, uh, uh, and it cost $600 to ship them. So we, were, we got all, you know, uh, brained out on it and uh, decided to make the ovens itself as part of the building and then just ship the components. So what we did and is made the ovens over here at these rental units uh, out of masonry. Well, if, you, if you've ever put a concrete block out in the sun and a piece of metal out in the sun, you know, you come out a couple hours later, you pick up the concrete block, it's warm. You can't even pick up the piece of metal. So that was the phenomena that we didn't count on. 
The masonry ovens didn't get as hot. The metal ovens got hot enough to fry shit. So we had the masonry ovens over here, not knowing that we were making a dreadful mistake, and got it all done, and tenants moved in, and they came over after being there for about two weeks, kind of embarrassed, and said, uh, we don't think our solar toilet is working. So you know, I go over there and lift the lid, and it's totally full of some kind of primordial soup. <laughs> Nothing being fried at all. It was, it was disgusting. And the reason was, that I didn't snap to until later, was the masonry oven does, just gets warm. The metal oven gets screaming hot, and it causes the frying to take place. All I was doing was making warm soup here. <laughs> and it was disgusting. And so I'm like, uh, I've been in this position a lot over the years, and it's, I had to buy time was my first. I knew I didn't have a solution, and, you know, and I knew these people you know, were starting to lose faith. <laughs> and uh, so I just went into buy, buy some time mode. And uh, uh, what I did was I went to Walmart and got uh, a couple bags of charcoal, and charcoal lighter, and I lifted up the toilet seat and dumped that all in, and filled it full of charcoal lighter and lit it, <laughs> and the people were gone for the day, and uh, I came back at 5 o'clock, and it did it. it the, the charcoal burnt all the way down and fried everything, and I almost, I had thoughts there for a minute of creating a charcoal toilet. Uh, you know, all you do is a bag of charcoal every week or something like that. And uh, uh. it's made like a stove, so it vented and everything. And I went back at 5 o'clock, and there was nothing but white coals glowing down there. And all the primordial soup was gone. It did have a, you know, it, it wasn't that thrilling, but still it was, it was gone. So I'm like all happy. I've bought myself some time. I go out with the crew. We drink some margaritas. I get home from drinking margaritas, and there's a phone call from my maintenance guy, and he said, uh, Mike, the, uh, it's on the answering box. The fire engines had to come out. The, uh, the building caught on fire. Because it turns out that the charcoal is the hottest when it's white coals, and it actually there's, there's that scraper in there, and it has a metal arm that comes up and goes through the woodwork. Well, the heat traveled up and caught the wood on, caught the front face on fire, and the building caught on fire. Fire trucks had to come out. There was a silver lining to that cloud was uh, the, the, the front face is burning and of course all the plumbing's on the front face and it melted the plastic pipes and the water started spewing on the fire and the fireman said in the newspaper that if it wasn't an earthship it would have burnt to the ground because uh, the way the earthship is designed the fire uh, burnt the pipes and opened up the water. So anyway, uh, there I am. My, I bought time, but didn't work out that well. And uh, plus, the buildings were brand new. And if, you're, if you've ever cooked a turkey in the oven on Thanksgiving, your whole house smells like turkey. Well, when you cook shit, your whole house smells like shit. And, you know, there was just this pasty smell in the whole house. And so I... Uh, I had to, I, am, I, am, I was out of the time buying mode at that time, at that point. I just went and put in a conventional septic tank over there, put in two flush toilets, repainted the whole building, spent two weeks and another few grand, abandoned the solar toilet idea. And of course, I was right in the middle of this new custom home. And during that whole trauma uh, is when I s decided to make the first planter, we were doing planters in the buildings anyway, that used gray water to flush the toilet so I could give people a flush toilet. And it, and it was because of the many hours of uh, trying to deal with that situation that I got my brain to the high enough temperature that it fell into this mode here. And uh, so this was really thanks to the uh, shit cooking incident. But I got the whole building the end of the story is I got the whole building all cleaned up and painted, spent a bunch of money, put in a septic tank. New people are coming from Canada to rent it. They came in uh, at night, and the next morning they come over, and they're all pissed off. And they 
I, you know, I'm like, what in the world is wrong? And they said, we came all the way from Canada to stay in an earthship. And this is not a true earthship because it doesn't have a solar toilet. So, and that's after I had just abandoned the whole solar <laughs> toilet. So I just gave them their money back and <laughs> told them to go get a mobile home or something. Uh, but anyway, those, it's, it's, uh, those are learning experiences. A everything that we're doing has been from failure, you know, miserable failure. <laughs> We need, we need some masala.